قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين the famous incident again we all know of it since we are children since we have children we heard this story and that is the poisoning or the attempted poisoning of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam after these negotiations some food was gifted to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it was cooked later on we find out by the wife of one of the leaders that had been killed later on we find out now when the food is gifted they don't know so one of the tribes gives delicacies, foods, and we can imagine the people of Khaybar being who they are. They have a different cuisine and they have some exotic foods and they have some different, you know, ways of cooking it. And no doubt they would have decorated it and made it like a massive gift. And it is understood that when a person has conquered and now this is the leader, so you show some honor to him. So it's not surprising that any people would try to appease the new leader by sending a beautiful gift. And so they sent him a lavish food item, massive tray full of meat and other items, whatever their cuisine will be. We don't know what their cuisine was. And we know now later on that the woman who cooked this, she asked around, what meat does the Prophet like the most? And she was told that he loves the shoulder blade of a lamb. This was the favorite meat of the Prophet the shoulder point of a lamb. And so she put poison in the whole lamb, but especially, especially in the upper shank or the shoulder blade. That's where she concentrated this uh, poison. And in fact, some of the books of Sira mention the name of this poison as well. But uh, there's no point in me mentioning the Arabic name. It's something long gone, the recipe for this poison. But it was a very, very potent poison. It was a very powerful poison. And we know this because of exactly what happened. When the Prophet of the Sahaba sat down to eat, the Prophet put a bite in his mouth and as soon as he put it in his mouth he said everybody stop eating everybody stop eating he said that but unfortunately one sahabi by the name of Bishr ibn al-Barra had already eaten and it was too late for him and the Prophet said everybody stop eating the shoulder of the lamb has told me that it has been poisoned. In other words, the lamb is speaking to me in this meat. The shoulder is speaking to excuse me. It has told me that it has been poisoned. So obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the meat to speak to the Prophet So the Prophet did not swallow, but he put it in his mouth. And as for Bishr, it appears he swallowed a little bit. And Bishr fell ill, fell severely ill, a number of other Sahaba, they spat out the, uh, the, the, the meat before they swallowed, so they had to be treated, and they by and large lived. The Prophet wasallam, as a result of this poison, he felt a pain, and he felt the effects of this poison for the rest of his life, for the rest of his four years. He has now four years left to live, for the rest of his life, so much so that on his deathbed, when he has a week left or a few days left, he will mention to Aisha that, O oh Aisha, I can still feel the effects of that poison from the Yahudiya of Khaybar. I feel it in my heart arteries, and I feel that now is the time the poison has finally reached my heart. Now, his death was written, but the poison was one of the causes that made that death more painful. He's still feeling, he says to Aisha, I can still feel the pain of that poison to this day. And the Prophet ﷺ, uh, as for Bishr, he eventually died in a few days. Right now he's sick, he's vomiting, whatnot. After a few days he dies. So the Prophet ﷺ called the tribe that had gifted him this meat. And he challenged them. He said, if I ask you anything, you promise to tell me the truth. They said, yes, we tell you the truth. So he said, who is your ancestor? Who is your communal ancestor? The one that you ascribe to. So they mentioned a name so-and-so. The books of Sirah don't mention. So the Prophet said, you are lying. Your ancestor is so-and-so. Meaning he's proving to them, I know what you do not know. And Allah has taught me what you are telling me is true or not. So they said, you have, no, whatever this, we don't know why they mentioned another name. 
perhaps there was some point of embarrassment about this person, so they substituted him for another person. Allah knows the reason, we don't know. But they said a lie. They said, our ancestor is so-and-so. And the Prophet said, no, your real ancestor is so-and-so. They know who the ancestor is. So they said, Sadaqta ya Abul Qasim, you have spoken the truth, you have, uh, you, know, you have been honest with us, so you know yani, who our ancestor is. So then he asked them again, so if I ask you a question, will you be honest with me? You already showed me you're lying. Will you be honest with me? So they said, Ya Abul Qasim, you already see now that if we lie, you can tell, so there's no reason for us to lie, we will be honest with you. We will be honest with you. So he asked him a second question. Who is going to the fire of hell? Another trick question. Are you honest with me or not? So they said, We will go for a short period of time, but then Allah will save us, and you and your people will remain forever. Now this was their belief. Allah says it in the Quran, right? Allah says in Surah Baqarah, وَقَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَ النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودًا we're only going to be there for a while. We're, they said basically, we know we're sinful. We know we haven't lived up to the laws of the Torah. So we're going to be punished for a while. Then we're going to move on. You guys will stay there forever. So the Prophet ﷺ said, اِخْسَأُوا فِيهَا Remain humiliated and, 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 and basically اِخْسَأُوا also means to shut up basically. اِخْسَأُوا فِيهَا Remain in the fire of hell. And wallahi, by Allah, we will not remain after you. You're this only for you basically, right? We are not going to be the ones that come after you in that place. So now I will ask you a third question. Will you tell me the truth? And they said, we will say the truth. So he said, did you poison the lamb? Did you poison, sorry, the goat. Did you poison the goat? And they said, yes, we did. And perhaps it was their honesty that saved them from all being killed. Allah knows best. Because they were not all killed. Perhaps it was this honesty. They said, yes, we did. So he said, why would you do that? So they said, well, if you are a liar in your claim to be a prophet, we would be free of you and your conquering. And if you are a prophet, then our mischievousness would not have harmed you anyway. This is their mentality, basically. Right? Either way, how can you get angry at us? If you're a liar, well then, we would have gotten rid of you. And if you're not a liar, then no matter what we did, you would not have been harmed. You see, you're still alive basically, right? Now look at the arrogance here. They see that the Prophet has been saved, but it doesn't affect them. And as Allah says in the Quran, يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ They recognize clearly, just like they recognize their own children. But it is a matter of pride and uh, prestige. And so uh, they admitted that they had poisoned. And they said it was so and so, the lady, she was the cook that did it. So he called for the lady. And he said to her, why did you do this? And uh, in some books of Sirah it is mentioned that uh, you killed my husband and you killed my uncle and so and so. They all died in the battle. So I wanted to kill you as a result. So she was honest that this is revenge. You did this, I'm going to do this back to you. And uh, some of the Sahaba uh, said to execute her because obviously this is what she uh, deserves. Now here is where the riwayat differ because some riwayat say <clears throat> that he did forgive her and some riwayat mentioned that she was killed. And so uh, scholars have tried to reconcile all of this and Ibn al-Qayyim basically as usual, Ibn al-Qayyim the master of Sirah comes along and he finds the way through and he says, the Prophet ﷺ forgave her for what she had done to him. But after a few days when Bishr died, she had to be killed for Qisas. Because she killed Bishr, the other Sahabi that died from the poison. So the Haqq of the Prophet ﷺ, he forgave her. And he did not retaliate for himself. But when Bishr died, and Bishr died after a few days at Khaybar, so then it is not fair for Bishr that Bishr's death goes unavenged. And so he had to do the Qisas on behalf of Bishr, and so the lady was eventually uh, executed.